Okay, this is example 15 in our complex number topic. And we're looking at the fundamental theorem of algebra. And the fundamental theorem of algebra simply says that for a polynomial equation of order n, there should be n solutions. In other words, I have here a cubic equation. It's a cubic equation because the highest power here is 3. And that tells me that there should be three solutions. Guaranteed. And one of the issues that we've already had when working just with real numbers, without complex numbers, is that, for instance, you've, you've come across um, co a quadratic equations um, where, according to the fundamental theorem of algebra, there should always be two solutions. We know that sometimes there are two solutions, and sometimes there's one, or sometimes there's no solutions. And the no solutions bit doesn't work with the fundamental theorem of algebra, because it, the whole point is that there are no real solutions sometimes to a quadratic equation. But once we introduce complex numbers, we can always find all of the solutions. So the kind of exciting thing is that that wall gets broken down and for any polynomial equation, we can say we know how many solutions there are going to be guaranteed. Some of them will be real solutions. Some of them may be complex solutions, but we will be able to find them all one way or the other. And that's pretty exciting. So what we're seeing with this example here is that there are definitely going to be three solutions to this equation. Now the extra bit of information is that if there is a complex solution, say for instance we had a complex solution of 1 plus 2i, complex solutions always come in pairs and that is its conjugate must also be a solution. So if I have a complex solution, I have a second solution of 1 minus 2i. In other words, there has to be an even number of complex solutions. That's even number. So, for this one here, which is the three solutions, there only are two possibilities. Either there are three real solutions and no complex solutions, or there's one real solution and two complex solutions. Okay? We cannot uh, ex expect a, a situation where there's um, one complex and two real solutions. That's just not going to happen. So in this case, we're actually guaranteed that there's one, at least one real solution. There's either one or three. And that's going to help us because if there's a real solution, it means that we can use or get into this by factorizing using the traditional real world or real number world technique of um, synthetic division. So we take our coefficients 1z cubed minus 1z squared minus 1z minus 2. And what we need is to find a, a number that's going to, when we do our synthetic division, it's going to give us 0 here. It has to be a factor of negative 2. So we only have a maximum of about 4 to choose from. So for instance, if I were to pick um, 1, let's just remind us, so we are going to see that 1 comes down here, multiply by 1, 1 times 1 is 1, add them together, I've got 0, multiply by the original 1 again, that gives me 0, add those two, negative 1, multiply by 1, that doesn't give us 0, so that's no good. Uh, if I try a negative 1, then I'll have a negative 1 here, add those two together, I get negative 2, multiplied by negative 1 gives me positive 2, add those together to give me 1, multiply those two together to give me negative 1, that's no good. So I'm thinking that maybe 2, well, so either it leaves me 2 or negative 2. Uh, if we try 2, then 2 times 1 is 2, and then together to give us 1, multiply by 2 and add multiply by 2 and add. There we go. There's our remainder of 0. And so we can reason out what we've just done there. 
and we can say as the remainder equals zero, then z equals two is a root or a solution, depending on uh, the word that you like to use. And the other thing that you might uh, also state at this point is the factor. Now, if z equals two is a solution or a root, then z minus two is the related factor. And that's also a good thing to be able to do. Why does that help us? Well, we know then that the original expression z cubed minus z squared minus z minus 2 equals 0 can then be factorised. We know that z minus 2 is a factor, and we should be left with a quadratic factor. Where do we get that information from? Well, hopefully you remember it comes from these three numbers here. That's our uh, constant term, that's our z term, and that's our z squared term. So we end up with z 1z squared plus 1z plus 1. That's us factorised it, so we can say, quite rightly, that either z minus 3 equals 0, of which we know that's also one already true, or z squared plus z plus 1 equals 0. In other words, this is where the other two solutions are going to come from. We're going to do a quick check of the discriminant. <coughs> um, so the discriminant here is so a is 1, b is 1, c is 1. So b squared minus 4 times 1 times 1 is actually going to give us negative 3, which tells us that uh, there are no real roots. In fact, there are going to be two complex roots, and that means I'm going to have to employ the quadratic formula. So z equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Negative b is negative 1 plus or minus the square root of, well, we've already done our check, and we've already discovered that b squared minus 4ac is negative 3. So that can go in there. Divided by 2 lots of a is 2. Which means that we have uh, nearly got our uh, solution. We've got a square root of a negative number, which of course didn't up until recently um, work. But now we can say that negative root 3 is the same as effectively root 3 times negative 1. And therefore, we can say that it's root 3 i, because the square root of negative 1 is i, plus or minus, which we've already taken care of. And that, at the bottom, we split it up into real and imaginary parts negative a half plus or minus root 3 over 2i. There's our two solutions, the complex number and its conjugate in one, which means that we have identified our three solutions. So with a great flourish at the end, we can say that the three solutions to this cubic equation are z equals 2, which we discovered at the start, and then z equals negative a half plus or minus root 3 over 2i. And it's okay to leave as in plus or minus form. You don't have to write them out separately. And there are our three solutions to a cubic equation. That's the fundamental theorem of algebra at work.